I mean, you know, actually, you don't set out to make a uh, sweep. I mean, look, there's no, there's no precedent for it. I mean, it's not like anyone wants to see. It's not like a studio can even say, we must have the next sweeping romantic epic, you know? Like, there was no real desire to see this done. And I say that just because in the planning, you don't set out to do something like this and not expect, as my wife likes to say, you don't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. So you expect difficult things. And I'm saying that to, to say to you, for example, a normal day at the office was it rained for the first time in a hundred years in the middle of the desert. The country got locked down from equine flu, which meant that every single horse throughout Australia could not move six inches. And we had 600 horses in one location alone. And, you know, Nicole Kidman, for example, who rides a horse, and Hugh Jackman, when you see the film, there is a stampede in the film, although I'm not sure it's in the trailer. Don't mention the stampede or Western hats, or let's not go there. But there's a stampede and Hugh Jackman rides a horse, full clip, amidst 1,500 head of cattle in the middle of a stampede. So he alone had to have five horses that all look the same. One that does stampede riding, one that does court, you know, they all have special tricks. So that was kind of normal stuff. The answer to your question, what was the most difficult day, was not really a day for me. The most difficult thing was not to give up, was just not to stop going. The difficult thing was to keep going, keep going, keep giving, keep going. Because when you do what I do, actually, it looks very singular up here. I'm here fronting it. But I'm really, I mean, collaboration is my biggest thing on anything, whether it's with my wife, Catherine Martin, and I collaborate with her on visual design and production design. She's got a staff of, I don't know, 600 people, and she tells the story that way. On music, which I develop as we're doing the script, Anton Monster, who happens to be here, and actually who produced the podcasts, right? I would work with Anton Monster. Where are you, Monty? Right, yes. Why don't you stand up? Yes. Hey, you haven't even seen the film and you like Monty's work. I love it. They've seen the podcast. Man. Oh, yeah, the podcast did a great <laughs> job. I mean, that was, yeah, he was moonlining. Anyway... <laughs> Like, Ant alone, I mean, I worked with, I think we had three composers, collaborating with them, you know, boom, 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 boom. And I'm, I'm giving you this example, because that's two wings, right? Imagine I've got, a, imagine I've got a, 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 a column of people that way, and a column of people this way, on two subjects. It's not mentioning sound, acting, you know, marketing, blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on and on and on, and give and give and give and give and give. So the most difficult thing is not to give up, is to get up and keep going every day. Uh, as for a really good day on set, uh, there, were, there were some really beautiful things that happened, extraordinary things that happened. But I guess if I set out to do this on a personal level, it was to, with my children, reconnect with my homeland, where I came from, and most importantly to understand the indigenous history of that place. And I think the most special day was completely unexpected that while we, the, pretty much around when we stopped shooting the Australian Prime Minister called together all of the elders of all of the Aboriginal tribes in Australia and brought them to Parliament House and the whole nation stopped one morning and said sorry and uh, lots of people came forward who remember there was an a woman who had been working on the film, she was an extra, which was so nice, we loved her, Ellie. So we gave her a stand-in job, she became a stand-in. And, uh, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people on a, on a film set. And you know some faces. And, and on that day she rang me up, she said, oh, Baz, Mr. Lerman, you know, I'm Ellie. I said, I know you, Ellie. Of course, every day I say, I'll get Ellie, she's really... She said, oh, I am Stolen Generation. And... Uh, Working on this film, you can't imagine what that has done to my family and I. And I thought that was a doesn't really get more special than that day. Hmm. It was something unexpected. Okay, we have uh, Sir down the back. It's trying to do uh, questions, isn't it? Oh yeah, I know. I was, let's. We yeah. have one from Australia at the back. Sorry, do, do oh. I feel directorial, like a bit pushy? Aren't I? No, you're doing. Uh, no. I'm sorry. I just you, saw you some... should direct me. I really <laughs> mean to. I'm so used to saying, "Let's do that." Gentleman there seems like a good idea. Okay. Let's, uh, yes, you, you, you do have such gusto and verb. It has to be you. Hi, my name is Patricio. I am a musician. And I wonder about your relationship with music. If you hear music when you are writing and yeah. after you use that music... Okay, so... This is Patricio. He is a musician. 
Good. Now Keep you, going. we'll do it together. <laughs> and he wants to know about your relationship to music. If you hear music when you're writing, uh, and how music is involved in your process. It's a very, it's a very good go, say, Patricia. We should have a mic down there for you, I reckon. And after you use that music, the yeah. same music that you hear when you write, if you use it in the film. Yeah, it's a very good question, uh, because I think the way we go about music in the films, in Monty's here is I, I, I can't, of course, speak for other people's processes. In fact, all of the other filmmakers that you've probably seen up here on the stage and that you know, I, I pretty much know all of them. And, you know, uh, they... I guess that's why they are... It's like authors, you know. Everyone has their own process, you know. But I can tell you this. Text, I see music as text, meaning I see it as script. And in fact, very early on, Mont and I would start with, OK, this would be how, how we do the archaeological dig. Monty and I would say, okay, let's start with the reality of the world. So I would get Monty to collect every single piece of music that the characters would experience. Now, in, ni- in the 1930s in Australia, it would be indigenous music. It would be big band jazz was being born. It would be country and western. There was a sort of interesting uh, kind of music we had to track down, and there are no examples of, which is sort of the mix of Asian pearling alaga music and sort of Aboriginal bush band. And, and so we got some people to reconstruct that. Then, you know, the list goes on. That's the actual incidental music. So that was something of which we would cook the sauce up from, and Mon would get a lot of examples of that. Then came, so let's call it inside music. Music inside the story. Music that the characters can actually hear and react to. Then there's what you might call outside music, which is a manipulation of the audience through an added level. That is, the characters don't hear it, it's score, basically. right? So the score, it was about setting the vernacular of the score and how the score would would have an effect upon the audience. So that meant identifying composer and so on and so forth. Way before I put that team together, I'd work with Monty and we'd li- list all the tracks and I'd start playing all that music and, and some of it was written into the film. Now, there's a huge musical idea in the film and I don't know if I can give it away. It's a bit like Sarah being a woman. Um, but, let me think. Here's the point. Some of the inside music, a piece of the inside music, became extrapolated early on to the outside music so that it was set up and experienced... In fact, this is true of many of the cues. So in the script, to answer your question, in the script, there would be pieces of music written about as function. And then... As we progressed, we would extrapolate that music out. In fact, they become the fundamental building blocks of the musical storytelling, which, by the way, is how operas were built in the golden period of opera. Because opera is very similar, in my view, because I've done quite a few operas, to film. There's more similarity between opera and film, from my point of view, than, say, opera and the legitimate stage, for, for want of a better word. Because in opera, each character is identified thematically through music. The music then moves along and you mix the themes up as you you have an argument, you mix the themes up. So you transform the musical cues based on what the action drama is. Now I will tell you in this film, music is used... uh, By the way, the little boy Nala, the indigenous culture of Australia is not a written word culture. Wisdom and ideas and important things are passed on through storytelling. It's a storytelling culture and a singing culture. And little Nala in the film is a magic singer. Mm. And there's a character called King George who has come to teach him the special and magic singing. And that is used with very many key dramatic plot points in a film. I just don't want to try and spoil it for you, for plots. So that's an example. I I guess the short answer is yes. You know? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> then, right. then you were trying to trick me with a rhetorical question. Okay. Here, the woman from Australia has a question. So. The woman from Australia. Do we do have a microphone? I like it. Yeah, let's use the microphone. I feel like we're Hi. on. Um, my question's about the stolen generation, your portrayal of it. Did you need to meet with the elders from different tribes, um, you know, to portray it the way that they wanted to see it? And were they... You know, were they hesitant at first or, or were they really open? It's a great question. Uh, I worked very early on with an Aboriginal filmmaker, actually, as a collaborator, all the way through the film. And, in fact, he wrote with me 